thousand generations falling down and worship to sing the song of ages to the land and all have gone before us and no who will believe we'll sing the song of ages to the land your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all the thrones and dominions powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy oh creation cries forgiven and if you've been redeemed sing the song forever to the Lamb if you walk in freedom and if you bear his name sing the song forever to the Lamb we we'll sing the song forever to the Lamb and the creation cries holy you're lifted high holy holy forever hear the people sing holy to the king of kings holy you will always be thrones and dominions powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy oh creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy Palm Sunday today, a day in which Christ entered into Jerusalem where there was celebration 
but there was also foreshadowing of what was to come. And so some of you have a palm leaf where you are. Some of you have a palm leaf back here. And so as Vera plays us in, we are going to wave our leaves. I'm going to invite all of you to stand as we celebrate Christ entering into Jerusalem. So let me see, before we get started, let me see your, your waving abilities. Yes, I see it. I love it. If you don't have a branch but you're desperate to wave, if you've ever seen a car salesman, you're welcome to do that. All right. Y'all stood up so I can't see Vera, so you're going to have to tell me when she gives me the all clear. Okay. <laughs> morning everyone. You are welcome to be seated as we continue to worship this day and celebrate the, the future of what is to come and the promise that God has already given and already exists in the lives of God's people. For those who do not know me, my name is Katie Glass and I'm the pastor here. It is a joy today and every Sunday that I get to worship our God with you. I do want to take a moment and thank you for allowing me to be out last week with our senior high kids at Senior High Retreat. I have to tell you that I know our youth sometimes get a bad rap, but I am so hopeful of what this next generation is going to do for the church. They were so excited to be a part of worship, to ask the hard and serious questions of a pastor. Um, they had some great questions, some questions I had to think about. Um, and then they got to participate in worship. So one of the things we did is I challenged them to put a word, any church-appropriate word, on a poster board, and then over the three talks I gave, I was going to fit their words in. Um, they did pretty well in the beginning, and I did all their words, and I may or may not have told them that they're weak sauce and they got to step up their game. And so that is how I use words that I don't even know how to pronounce still today in a sermon for a bunch of high school students. But they were so grateful that I got to be here, and I'm so grateful that I got to be there with them. And so thank you. And for those who stepped in and helped Candy last week, um, she only had great things to say about y'all. So I'm very grateful that I get to be your pastor. We have a lot happening in the life of the church. You may know that Holy Week is approaching. We are starting it off today with Palm Sunday. But if you look inside of your bulletin, you'll see a little sheet of paper that tells you things that are happening in the life of the church. So you will be able to see that we need a VBS director. And so after talking with those who are helping do the crafts and those who are helping do other things, um, we've determined that if, a v if there's not a VBS director that's willing to step up or co-directors that can step up by the end of this month, then we're going to postpone VBS till next year. So we really want this ministry to happen. We need some folks to kind of step in and help us make it possible. Um, so if that's something you're interested in or you think, hey, I might could co-do that, let me, let me get some more information about it. You can speak with me, you can speak with Anita. We would love to tell you the joy that is found in VBS. You'll also see that there are some studies that are happening right now in the life of the church, um, from a women's study to a Sunday morning study, as well as our handbells, which you'll get to see us play today, um, and choir. There's always ways for you to plug in and to be a part of worship here. And then I do want to make you aware, because this is Holy Week, some things are going to happen a little differently. So on Monday, Thursday, 
or all week, for all of our Holy Week activities, we are partnering with Hosanna Lutheran and Covington Presbyterian to do an ecumenical community celebration of Holy Week. And so on Thursday, for Monday, Thursday, we will meet at Covington Presbyterian Church, which is the white church between St. Peter's and Aquistapes. It's just through the peanut around in that direction. If you're not certain where it is, just grab me, and after church, I can point to it from our church, and I'll make sure you know where it is. And then on Good Friday, they're all going to come to us and worship here as we celebrate, um, celebrate maybe not the best word, as we recognize the final moments of Christ's life and what the ultimate promise was for God's people. So both services are at 6 o'clock, whether it's at the Presbyterian Church or here, and we would love to have you. Also, if you look in your pews, you'll see a little black book. If you'll sign in for us, that's how we know that you're here, and we can check in if there's a new address or a new phone number or something we need to change in our system, please just make note of that because we'd love you to hear everything that is happening in the life of the church. I also have a fun announcement. You know, when you become a pastor, you always hear that this thing happens to you, that one day you'll just be up there preaching and you'll look out and all of a sudden your boss is in your congregation. Luckily, I spotted her before I started preaching. But our district superintendent, Carly Pigeon, is here, and so Carly's over there, if you just want to wave. She is the one that helps us lead this church with the conference level. So if you were just dying today, I know you all woke up and said, oh my gosh, who do I get to tell how perfect Katie is? (laughs) It's Carly. She's never heard it enough. I mean, she knows it. But she could never hear it enough if you just wanted to tell her how perfect and wonderful I am, and yeah. (laughs) And so we continue in worship by taking a moment, recognizing that the world has good things and bad things, and we all face days the same. We have our high, high moments, and we have our low, low moments. But in this space, for a brief amount of time, we get to release all the worries that the world gives us, trusting that God can carry it. So I invite you to take a deep breath. Let it go. And let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and merciful God, we thank you for this place, for these people, for these voices, for the celebration that we get as your people. You stand in your presence knowing that the world we face, no matter how difficult it is at times, is not strong enough to overcome you. Lord, we celebrate the voices big and strong those from the littlest of us, those from the oldest of us, and the wisest. And Lord, we know that you have created a place for them here. That you are showing us the church is alive and well, and we praise your name for that. Lord, as we worship here, open our minds, open our hearts, open all parts of us to hear your word, to grow in our understanding of you, and to chase you down more and more each day all of this and the one who goes before us goes with us and goes behind us amen i invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our call to worship it'll be an opportunity for us to recognize what we believe in this lenten season we come to prepare for the holiest of weeks We will will journey journey through through praise praise with joy joy on our lips. We will travel through betrayal and and death, cradling hope deep in in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We We wave wave palm branches in anticipation. anticipation. We We lay lay our love before before him to cushion his walk. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna. 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 Blessed Blessed is the the one one who brings us the kingdom kingdom of God. Amen. You may be seated as our bell choir comes up. So one of my favorite things about bell choir is Uh, Not long ago, I was just minding my business, and I found out that they needed one more person. And I made the absolute joy 
of telling Nancy that I can kind of read music. And so if the pastor can do it, I promise you can too. If you look up here and you think, hey, I want to be a part of that, I will gladly take off my gloves and give them to you because I want everybody to have a chance. So if you're thinking, if you're looking, if you're searching, you just let us know there's room for everybody in Bell Choir. Don't you want to do it too? As we continue in worship, we recognize that there are many ways that we can make a joyful noise through bells and through singing. So I invite you, as you're able to stand or stand in spirit, as we sing our hymn of praise, Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service, verses 1, 3, and 4, is hymn number 581. Perfect. 
our kids come forward for children's time. What's up, my friends? How are y'all doing? Good. Good. How are y'all doing? Are you excited to be all the way up here? Do you know what today is? Palm Sunday, right? And we celebrated by waving palms in. Do you know why we use palms? Do you remember the story? Yeah, it's a symbol of a king. When, when Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, they were waving their palm fronds. They were laying their clothes in the street so that he could ride over the path. And so we saw how well y'all waved coming in, and they did a great job, right, my friends? They did a great job. But now I've got another task for you. You see, as they were waving, welcoming Christ in, they would lay them in the path, and Christ would walk over them. So we're going to make a path. Are you ready? You got your shoes on good for us to make a path? Okay. I'm going to give you some leaves, some of these palms. And I want to, let's see, I need a friend. I need a helper. Taylor, I'm so glad you volunteered. Taylor, don't let this go to your head, but you are Jesus right now. So Jesus is going to follow the trail with you. So can you go stick some of these out for Dad to walk on? And y'all go, I'm going to give you some. And you go put some for Mr. Taylor to walk on. And here's you some. And can you go lay some down? So just all the way out there, let's just go make a path together. There we go. I love to see it. And Jesus is coming behind us, walking on the path. Should we make it kind of a, a leap and a jump? Hey, you can only step on the palm leaves. So should we make it a little difficult for him? Maybe all the way out here? We're going to test him? Dang it. i got to try harder than that. You should not have said that. <laughs> I'm going to make him do parkour. Yes, I am. Okay, Dad. Jesus, if you'll make it to the end of the path. (laughs) Okay, so now we're all going to walk the path together. Okay, you ready? So as Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, they were excited to see him because he was their Messiah. And so they laid the palms and the clothes down. And Jesus rode in on a baby donkey, and they took the whole way down. And the whole time, they celebrated Jesus and what they knew Jesus could do as our Messiah. So y'all coming down the path? And as they got closer and closer, they got more and more excited to meet their Messiah. Okay, now we're going to do a quick, a quick one. You ready? You got your running feet? Oh, let me see. Go ahead. Any mark? Get set. Go. Wow, that was fast. Okay, y'all ready? Any mark? Get set. Go. Any mark? Get set. Go. So they made that long journey, and then as they got to the end, they were so excited that they saw a Messiah coming. But some of them thought that the Messiah would be this powerful person who made everybody go away. But what did our Messiah do? Do you remember the story? Say that again. He did. He let all the children come to him. And so he was about having our kids be involved, and he was about being close to his people. And so while they expected this mighty, powerful Messiah, like a soldier, they got somebody who chose love. And so as we go through this Holy Week, we're going to hear about the final week and celebrate what Jesus did for us, and sometimes sit in the sadness of what happened. So I want you to think, are you ready? We've started it, but have we finished our journey to Easter yet? No, we still got a little ways to go, so you think y'all can hold on that long? Okay, so I'm going to leave the leaves out for right now. It's okay if some of them broke, it's okay. And you're going to walk your path all the way back. You see um, our teachers are back there. You're going to go to Children's Church, and you're going to learn more about this, okay? 
So we're going to say our prayers. Are you ready? Gracious Lord, we thank you for the path you set before us. For the reminder that just as we celebrate and welcome you in, you call us to celebrate and welcome others in. Lord, help us be a people who fall before you, celebrating your mighty power, building a path so that your word and your message goes on beyond us. Lord, we thank you. Everybody says, Amen. Okay, you ready? So I want you to skip back there, but do not slip on the, on the things, okay? You ready, Freddies? You can skip all the way back there. I will not stop you. You ready? On your mark? Get set? Go. So as we celebrate the, mess, the Messiah being brought in, being welcomed in, and our kids being a part of that, they remind us that God has set a journey before us. That Easter isn't here yet, that we sit in this moment. One of the ways that we live in the moment, that we live this life, is by praying for and with one another. So I want to lift up a couple of prayer concerns that we have right now in the church. So we want to pray for Mr. Malcolm. He usually sits in the back on this side. Um, he ended up back in the hospital this week, and so he's in and out, in and out, and trying to get better. So we want to continue to pray for him. Um, Miss Rosalie is here today, but we want to continue to pray for Miss Rosalie as she goes through treatments. We're so glad to see you. If you need anything, you just let us know. Um, we also want to pray. Usually you would see Mike and Jenny up here in the choir. On Friday, um, Mike went into the nursing home. And so if you will be praying for them in this transition, especially for Jenny, um, as it's not hard when you've been the caretaker of somebody for, for many, many years to then let somebody else do it. So if you will pray for Jenny and, of course, for Mike as he gets adjusted. We also want to lift up Miss Helen. She is um, one of ours who worships online with us every week. She ended up in the hospital last week with a viral infection. Um, but she is back at the Trace right now, and she's doing better. Um, we also want to lift up Miss Jo Brannon, who um, had a stroke and was in the hospital, um, and she has now been moved to hospice, but she is also back at the Trace. So two of our homebound that are faithful watchers, we love you, we're praying for you. Um, as I hear needs that may exist, I'll let you know how we can step in on that. Um, we also know that violence continues to exist in our world, so we want to I uh, pray for all of those who were victims, whose families lost somebody this past week in attacks that happened around the world, including in Russia. Um, and if you remember, for a couple of weeks, we've been praying for Kelly's uncle. This past week, he entered into hospice. So we're praying for your family, for your dad, and um, for peace and whatever this next journey looks like. Um, she is joyful that most of the extended family got to fly to him and have a weekend as their, their full family and celebrate the life that he has and the memories that they have shared with him. Um, but we know that entering into the season is, is a hard season when we know end of life is coming. So we know that we don't do it alone. That's what the church is for. So as we surround Kelly and her family, as we surround all people who are going through this, we praise God for giving us the gifts to love fully, without restriction. So I invite you to join me as we pray. Gracious God, you've heard the cries of our hearts. You've heard the ways that we need you. The people we love who are sick in need of your healing, the people we love who are entering into this last season of life here on this side of glory. So Lord, we ask in those moments that your peace, your assurance of life eternal would surround us. And in you, we would celebrate being your people. Lord, as we continue to love, let us remember all of those in our congregation in need of your healing, in need of an extra bit of your love. Those who are entering into new phases of life, those who are just struggling to stay well, Lord, those in need of healing. We trust that you can heal in a way that we don't always understand, but in it, Lord, we find peace. Lord, we celebrate on Sunday. As we welcome in the Messiah, we know each and every morning we have the opportunity to recognize 
The Messiah has already been welcomed into our hearts and into our minds and into our places and into our heart, O Lord. Lord, prepare for us. What is to come, the good, the bad, the in-between, prepare for us a heart that is ready to move and to act and to serve and to rest when needed and to reach out for help when needed, knowing we do not journey alone. Pray all of this in the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I invite you as you are able to stand or stand in spirit as we sing our hymn of reflection, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. It is hymn number 64. together in our statement of faith of the Korean Methodist Church. The words are on the screen or in the bulletin in front of you. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and a redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen.
There we go. Sorry. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. They shouted, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written. Don't be afraid, daughter Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand these things at first. After he was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. God for the people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I invite you to hear from Mark chapter 11. It says, When Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Jesus gave two disciples a task, saying to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter it, you'll find tied up there a colt that no one has ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, Its master needs it and he will send it back right away. They went and found a colt tied to a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some people around them said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them just what Jesus had said, and they left them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes upon it, and he sat on it. Many people spread out their clothes on the road, while others spread branches cut from the field. Those in front of him and those following were shouting, Hosanna, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. After he looked around at everything, because it was already late in the evening, he returned to Bethany with the twelve. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for your holy words, for the teachings we get again and again that grows us closer to you. Lord, open our minds so that we may hear this story anew, that we may find ourselves walking this journey of Lent, not already knowing how it ends, but excited with where you will take us. Lord, allow these words to be yours and not mine, for the growth of our spirit, our hearts, our minds, and everything that we have. Amen. So we continue in this Lenten season. We started, it seems like, a long, long time ago, but wasn't quite that long ago. And we've journeyed slowly. We've recognized the power of a Messiah, the promise that exists, and yet that the journey still continues. I always find myself, when I get to like this week of holy season, I'm already counting down the days. I'm already going, okay, so how many weeks until the beginning of Advent? When do I need to start planning that? And I seem to get to this week and think, oh yeah, we did Lent. Let's get to Sunday. Let's celebrate. And I forget this in-between time. At least I don't think I give as much time to it as I should. Because if we're going to be really honest with one another, it's not always a ton of fun to reflect on the death and the bad that we know occurs. We want to skip over the pain that our Messiah felt and get to the celebration of Easter. And today we get to celebrate a little bit that our Messiah, the teacher, the one who taught and walked and performed miracles and led and led and led again and again, entered into Jerusalem. I always love this part of the story. We see that Jesus doesn't ask for this big war horse. Jesus doesn't ask for the best of the best. Jesus doesn't ask for a horse that has been trained. Jesus asks for a colt, which is the smallest of the small, a donkey, a baby donkey that's never been ridden before, that doesn't know how to do the things a donkey is to do. That is who Christ chose. I always think, if I were one of those people waving the branches and here my Messiah came, striding down the way, 
from the smallest source, a cult, I don't know how I would react. I would think that our Messiah would have something grander and better, and yet our Messiah chose a cult. You see, in the scripture passage, not from today, but if we go all the way back to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, we will see it is prophesied that Christ will enter in on a cult. By Christ giving these instructions to his disciples, by Christ flipping the, the expectation on its head, we see Christ fulfill a prophecy. For those who were still trying to follow along, were still trying to be a part of this, they had that reassurance that Christ fulfilled a prophecy. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. What has been expected has been fulfilled. I think about our Messiah and the ministry of the Messiah that was always to be present in the lives of those who needed Christ's presence, including those whose society said, there is no place for you here, including those who said, Jesus, what are you doing? You don't want to eat with the likes of them. Jesus, throughout the ministry, made a point to say, these are my people. These are who I eat with. This is who I do ministry with. Jesus chose humility. In taking this little cult, this tiny thing that has no experience to do the job that Jesus was asking it to do, I wonder how often we found ourselves in that cult's position. Where we're just doing what we know how to do and somebody comes along and says, and this is what you're going to do. And you think, well, I don't know how to do that. I've never done that before. I'm not strong enough. I'm not big enough. I don't represent it well, and God still chooses you. See, Jesus could have rode in on anything, but a humble cult that was learning to lead in a Messiah in the very presence of our God. It was through humility and love, rather than the, the military conquering that everybody expected that Christ would enter into Jerusalem. Instead of the, the music shouting, people taking out one another, the, the land being full of disagreements and feeling of oppressed, they got peace. They got Christ. Not long ago, we began to envision, who are we in this place? Who did call, God call First United Methodist Church of Covington to be? And through lots of conversations, through lots of journeying of our own, through facing the bright and shiny times and facing the times that we wish to never see again, God offered us direction. God led us to be a church that firmly believes we are called to love God and love all of God's people. So much so that that is the statement we decided we were going to tell the world that they could expect from us, that we love God and we love God's people. I love this imagery of a cult, this thing that was common, ordinary, accessible to all people. Cults were not that expensive. expensive. But this is used as an image to show us how deeply and holy we can approach the Messiah. How deeply and holy and present the Messiah is with God's people. That you don't have to be this and that and do this and have accomplished this and understand this to be a part of the story. But just because you are, because God loves you, God is accessible to you. We saw throughout Scripture often 
that God will take the ordinary and turn it into something extraordinary, something life-changing that brings together God's people. This riding in, this celebration, this moment in time, shows us the beauty and the extent of God's mighty power through Jesus Christ. That by peace, by affirming the kingship of Jesus, by emphasizing that Christ is accessible for all of God's people, we see the long-awaited mighty Messiah enter in. And then we see people respond. People who are so overcome with the mighty power of Christ that they throw their things down and they shout, Hosanna! Hosanna! That they create a path built for a Messiah with the things that they have honoring what goes before them. Hosanna! Hosanna! A celebratory call that the Messiah had come to Jerusalem. Hosanna is a word we say often, but in the original Greek it means, save now, we pray. Save now, we pray. Hosanna. The Messiah has come. Those who gathered around the path, those who built the path, knew who went before them and had all the assurance to cry out, save now we pray, knowing that we serve the God, and we serve a God who will, who will deliver, who will show up, who will pave a way for God's people. This call recognized who Jesus was, as our Messiah, as our hope, as the things that were to come that we didn't quite understand yet, as the things that are to come in our lives that we don't quite see yet. Hosanna, knowing God will deliver. And so all throughout Lent, we've been reading Scripture, we've been hearing God's Word, and we've been focusing on, okay, what does that mean for us? I know it was not just the disciples who were expected to recognize that as the Messiah or those who built the path, but what about us? What about today? As we approach this week, as we have approached all of Lent, we prepare ourselves. We look at the places where God is not present in our hearts and minds and remove the things that take God's place. We look at the world around us to the places where God is calling us to be the hands and feet. And now we come to these final moments where it would be normal to pull back, fade away, not want to be involved in the sadness that is to come, but Christ calls us to go out. To receive Christ for who Christ is in our lives. To go and do and love in the way that Christ has made possible for us to do. And to respond with joy. Last week, while I was with the high schoolers, I asked them to explain joy to me. I said, what what is joy to you? And they said that that feeling when you wake up thinking your alarm clock's about to go off and you still have three more hours of sleep. That moment, joy. One of them said the final pose of my final dance routine at school. There was sadness, but man, was there joy, because I remembered the little girl who started it all. God invites us in this moment, as we prepare for what is to come, that still joy exists, that our Messiah calls us joy, that we're called to surrender, that we're called to recognize that just as our kids put down a path, and though it is a temporary path, that eventually gets picked up 
Weeks pass, and then the time comes where maybe we remember that we put the leaves out. God calls us not to move past this moment too quickly. But to stand here, wave the leaves, to celebrate, Hosanna, Hosanna. Save us now, we pray, and know that God does. We enter into Holy Week with joy and sorrow, but we enter anyway. Knowing that life is a journey, and it may feel like we're coming to the end of this one, but a little foreshadowing, this journey actually never ends. So wherever you go, whatever you do, whether it's ringing bells, working in your garden, reading a good book, holding down the couch while you watch TV, whatever it is, Know that the Messiah has created you to enter into this journey of Lent, not just for a temporary time, but for all time. Recognize that God is available to you, and in that, we celebrate joy and hope and assurance. That there is more to come, that the story doesn't just end on what is to come, but that God continues to deliver God's people. Today and every day. So be a Hosanna people who shout out with the assurance that God will be there. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we thank you for your promise. For this moment where we celebrate your son entering into Jerusalem, this powerful moment that shows us how deeply and closely God chooses God's people. Lord, let us celebrate, not to become overcome with the pain and the sorrow that is to come, but to celebrate this moment as we have it. Just as those before us have celebrated a coming Messiah again and again. Lord, let us take this week one day at a time. Not rushing to the celebration of Easter, but standing in your presence each and every day. Now God's people said, Amen. We continue by giving of our tithes and our offerings, of recognizing that God has gifted us mightily, and we get to be a part of that journey. And so I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward. And as they do so, I want us to remember that there are many ways to praise God. There are many ways to celebrate God's gifts. And I invite all of you to be a part of that journey. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us, for the ways that you have led us to be a people who love God and love all of your people. Lord, use what we give you today to grow your kingdom, to grow our hearts, to grow our minds, to grow our ministry and the ways in which you are calling us. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you're able as we praise God together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm going to give you a few moments to share God's joy with one another, and then when you hear the music begin, that's your sign to return to your seats because we'll start singing whether you're there or not. So go and share God's peace. Forever. 
grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he rose over the dead that he conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him, grave could not keep him. many emotions to come. I invite you to be present with whatever is before you. To be a people who yell, Hosanna, knowing God would answer. And so I'm going to invite you to join with me on this last part. One of the things you hear me say every week is our vision statement. And now it's your turn to join me in saying it, because this is who we are and this is what we believe. So as you go from this place, go in peace, love God, and love all of God's people. Amen.